Hi, my name is Tom Frankwitz. I'm subject matter expert on waste sector methane here at RMI. I'll be moderating our webinar, introducing waste map, uh, introducing uh, a new tool on track to track and reduce waste methane emissions, hosted by RMI and our partners at Cleaner Task Force and the Global Methane Hub. We'll have a special guest speaker from Ambire Global. Thank you for joining us to talk about this critical platform for helping countries achieve their ambitious climate action and waste management goals. Quick reminder, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted on RMI's event page within 24 hours of the event. We'll send that recording out to everyone who's registered, along with other resources and contacts. Uh, during the webinar, please feel free to drop any questions that you have into the Q&A function on your screen. That Q&A function is just to the left of the chat. Um, people won't have access to the chat, so please feel free, please uh, remember to drop your questions into the Q&A. Um, we'll uh, be answering some of those uh, in the, in the Q&A function. Uh, but also we'll, we'll try to uh, reserve, we'll be reserving about 10 minutes at the end to answer some of those questions directly. Anything we don't get to, we'll try to follow up after the webinar. Uh, the webinar will be about 60 minutes. Thank you for joining us. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Next. Thank you. A little bit about us. We're a nonpartisan organization focused on transforming the way our economy is powered. Because 70% of greenhouse gas emissions come from the energy sector, we believe that reducing emissions 50% by 2030 is the most direct way to align with a 1.5 degree future. And because methane is over 80 times the global warming potential of CO2, but with a much shorter lifespan, focusing on methane emissions concurrently is the smartest way to keep us on track and benefit from those reductions in the near term. Next. We've got a great group of speakers here from assembled across our partners at Cleaner Task Force, the Global Methane Hub, and Ambire Global. They'll be talking about some of the key functions of the platform, the way that we work together to increase emissions transparency and direct and engage directly with countries to demonstrate how these measures can be deployed. Carolina Ermanetta, Program Director with Waste and Circular Economy, Regional Lead Americas, of the Global Methane Hub will provide context on the urgency of addressing methane from the waste sector and the need for emissions transparency and direct engagement in meeting the Global Methane Pledge. Rose Wang, our Manager for Climate Intelligence Program at RMI, will provide an overview of the platform explaining data used at national, subnational, and site level and how the decision support tool may be used to assess policies impact on emissions. Evan Ayandale, Manager with Climate Line Industries at RMI will discuss the global strategic playbook for waste management and country specific playbooks used to help partners understand strategies that may be deployed to achieve reductions based on their waste management practices. Kate Siegel, Waste Sector Manager, Methane Pollution Prevention at Cleaner Task Force, will provide an overview of country engagement as part of WasteMap, helping partners assess and deploy measures to reduce methane. And lastly, Vishwas Vindiranya, Co-founder and Managing Director of Ambire Global will take a deep dive in policy assessments conducted in Barranquilla and Cartagena, Colombia. Next. Over the course of the webinar, we'll introduce WasteMap, demonstrate the platform, provide an overview of playbooks and other resources developed under WasteMap. We'll cover country engagement more deeply, taking a deep dive in Colombia, and then provide some time at the end for questions and answers. And next, we'll start with our first speaker of the day, Carolina Ermaneta. Carolina, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tom, and thank you for the invitation. As you said, my name is Carolina Ermaneta. I am the head of the Waste and Circular Economy Program at the Global Methane Hub. And I'm going to introduce this excellent webinar and first, we need to understand why we are talking about methane. And it is because methane has contributed to 45% of recent net warming. That's why we're talking about methane. And it's because we do have a good opportunity in order to tackle uh, climate change if we go with uh, methane mitigation actions. Methane is generated by three sectors, 
energy, agriculture, and waste. And of course, today we are going to talk about waste. And um, as I was saying before, I am representing the Global Methane Hub, which is a philanthropic effort in order to align funding on methane mitigation in the three sectors. And what we do is to support the Global Methane Pledge signatories and also potential signatories in meeting the pledge and go beyond. What is the Global Methane Pledge? It's a commitment that more than 150 countries sign in order to reduce their methane emissions in 30% by 2030. And what we do is to support different organizations with different partners as RMI and CATF. And we are going to talk today about this waste map, with, 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 which is an initiative to provide better data and MRB related with um, methane mitigation. If we go to the next slide, please. This is how uh, a referential picture on what we are going to see today. With methane, we do have a great opportunity because we could see the emissions with this plume as you are seeing there. And what we are doing here is to have an open platform resource in order to showcase this, these emissions. And we don't want to just have the data, right? We want to have the data to improve inventories and to showcase that in the waste sector, we could have uh, methane mitigation. And that's why we are working and supporting this initiative also with a great partner as google.org, who is also funding this initiative. And if we go to the next slide, let me please um, uh, tell you that this initiative, it's really important because it is one of the biggest initiatives that is supporting also the lowering organic waste methane partnership that we launched with a lot of organizations and countries uh, at COP28. What is the vision there is to have at least 40 subnational jurisdictions and locking 10 billion to cut at least 1 million tons per year of methane well before 2030. Why? Because we need to have this goal that we were talking about uh, and related with the global methane pledge. But we know that when we talk about waste, we need to talk about national commitment, but, not, but also subnational, right? And how to work with that and to talk about specific data and information. So what we do in this partnership is to have jurisdictions that are aware of the problem and that has ambitious commitments in order to reduce methane from the waste sector. And as, or, as an organization, what we do is to support these jurisdictions uh, with data and transparency. And that's what we are going to talk today with the, uh, with the waste map also with finance, with technical capacity, and in policy development. So that's the main idea of what we are uh, trying to do in the waste sector with uh, our approach at the Global Methane Hub. And if we go to the next one, my last message to you is to consider that we need to reduce our organic waste because if not, we are pouring gasoline on the planet and that's what we don't want to do. So one of uh, a really important activity related with that is to have good data and MRB in order to have accountability and also transparency. And that's why we are supporting this initiative. And we are very happy to have you all here in this webinar. So over to you, Tom, to have our next presentation. Thank you. Thanks so much, Carolina. That's a really great demonstration of uh, the urgency of dealing with waste its impact on methane. This little slide here just shows kind of how we bring these elements together in WasteMap, both for providing a, an open source platform and decision support tools to increase emissions transparency, but also marrying that with our approach of, of country engagement on the ground for proof of concept. Highlighting that more deeply will be our manager of climate intelligence program, Rose Wang, who's gonna do a, a live demonstration of some of the key features of the tool, uh, including its, its decision support tool. Rose? Thank you, Tom. 
Can you see the screen fine? I see it just fine. Thanks, Rose. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm thrilled to guide you through the features of the WasteMap web tool. Let's kick off our journey by exploring the global perspective. The world map showcases the emissions intensity of methane in the waste sector. Each country is color coded to represent per capita waste methane emissions. To dive deeper, click on a specific country like Mexico to access its emissions time series. The solid waste disposal sites that we have curated data for, a comprehensive country report, and its rank in global, uh, its global emissions ranking. Zooming into individual countries, each Navy dot represents a city that is modeled by RMI. The bigger the size of the dot, the higher the emissions. Users can click on a city like Monterey, for example, to review a city card with key statistics on methane emissions, waste generation rate, waste characteristics, or current waste management practice in the city. Each orange dot represents a solid waste disposal site. Click on a site provides detailed statistics, including modeled emissions, rates of the site, waste in place. For some sites, we also have satellite plume views and plume emission rates obtained from our partners at Esron and Carbon Mapper. Now let's use a navigation hamburger and shortcut to the decision support tool, which is a unique functionality of waste map. It empowers decision makers to compare methane mitigation scenario across various waste management practices. Let's try a live scenario. Select a country, say United States, and select a city from the drop down list and use the default scenario starting year of 2024. The scenario start year means starting from 2024, we will be simulating some policy intervention on methane method mitigation. Once done, the baseline emission time series is plotted in this chart. Now we can experiment by increasing the percentage of waste that is diverted to composting from the baseline's a percentage of 8% to 13%. We can see like a wedge of reduction here. We can further increase recycling rate from 0% to 8% and the future emissions of methane further reduced. We can also increase the percentage of waste goes to anaerobic digestion and see some further reduction We can also simulate methane re reduction potential of a land fuel gas capturing project using this toggle. As you can see, organic waste diversion initiatives and mitigation projects will incur different costs. The decision support tool will empower policymakers and operators to find the most effective combination of policies, programs, and projects to maximize methane reduction within the constraints of available resources. After you are done with this scenario, you could click reset to default to the baseline position and try another scenario. Finally, I would like to quickly mention the resources page, which features our country engagement work so far, including methane mitigation strategy playbooks, technical analysis memos, and more. And the about page, which covers our story. And that concludes our waste map web tool demo. A special thanks to our funders, the Global Methane Hub and Google.org for their unwavering support. Our gratitude also extends to our data partners, Climate Trace, Carbon Mapper, Esron, Stanford Media LML Group, our partners at the Low Methane Initiative, and our technology partner Earth Genome 
for providing front-end development support. With that, I'll pass the mic over to Tom. Thank you, Rose. That's a great overview of the tool. Obviously, there's a lot more functionality there, but I thought that was a great job of covering uh, the basics and showing some of how our key functions work. Next, I'd like to introduce Evan Ayendele, Manager of Climate Line Industries at RMI. She'll be providing an overview of the Global Strategic Playbook, the archetypes that it's based on, and talking about some of the country-specific playbooks that we've developed as well. Evan? Thank you, Tom. And hi, everyone. Uh, it's very nice to be here to talk a little bit more about our strategy playbooks. Next slide, please. So we developed a, a global playbook for mitigating methane, municipal solid waste methane emissions. And the purpose of this playbook really is to provide key decision makers at the national as well as at the subnational levels with a guide on strategies to reduce methane emissions from municipal solid waste. And so we do this by, if, by assessing waste management practices across several regions across the globe. We recognize the unique differences in how municipal solid waste is managed across different parts of the world. And so we identify four different categories, which you actually see to the right. And I'm gonna highlight, I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight a few um, features of each of this archetype. So the first archetype is the build the basics archetype or the BTB archetype. And this archetype characterizes low to medium collection rates and also very limited waste treatment and disposal. Disposal is um, primarily um, done at dump sites and you can find that open burning is common with this archetype. The next archetype is the build the basics plus, which shares very similar characteristics with the BTB archetype but demonstrate a noticeable pro progression from the use of dump sites to sanitary landfills. Um, one thing um, that is worth highlighting for the Beat to Basics Plus archetype as well is that open burning may still occur in some situations. The third archetype is the move up the hierarchy or the MUH, and these are a lot more advanced in their waste management practices. Um, waste disposal primarily occurs in sanitary landfills, right? And some of these landfills are equipped with gas collection systems that capture and control methane. And then the final archetype is the close to circle or the CTC archetype. And I think what is very unique about this archetype is that um, many of the countries in the CTC archetype have banned biodegra biodegradable waste from entering landfills. Um, and in waste incineration is also common. So that is just a little bit um, kind of an overview of those different archetypes. Um, there are obviously a lot more um, characteristics and features that you can find in the playbook in a lot more detail. But after the we've developed these archetypes, we do examine challenges and, or if you will, opportunities for how to reduce methane emissions across each of these archetypes. And based on right um, the features and based on the opportunities that we identify, we create methane mitigation strategies that are tailored to each of these archetypes. Next slide, please. So this slide essentially is showing a conceptual framework. Um, and this framework essentially, you can, you can see that we have a set of guiding questions um, that are informed by four building blocks, right? And so the building block source reduction, waste diversion, waste disposal, um, which you can see here to your right, are essentially tied to the waste management value chain, um, as well as a fourth building block, which is the cross-cutting component that examines opportunities across policy and regulatory frameworks, um, emissions transparency, finance, as well as opportunities to improve stakeholder awareness and capacity building. Um, I guess the focus, the, the purpose of the slide really is to show you kind of how we informed the development of the archetype. And so please don't try to read the guiding questions on here. I think in your spare time, I definitely encourage you to take a, um, a deeper look into the report to review those guiding questions and how we come up with those archetypes. Next slide, please. And here is a snapshot of um, essentially some of the methane mitigation strategies that we have recommended in the playbook. And so this is specifically showing some methane mitigation strategies um, for the recovery and treatment phase of the waste management value chain. 
Um, one more, next slide, I'm sorry, next. And then here is a set of um, key levers, right? Recognizing that there are several opportunities and several recommendations. This slide essentially is showing three levers across that each country or each archetype um, can essentially focus on to improve their waste management practices and also align their waste management practices to be more um, aligned with the very well-established waste management hierarchy, which I think a lot of people are familiar with. But essentially, the waste management hierarchy prioritizes and ranks waste management um, practices um, from preferred to least preferred. And so I think this levers help countries and provide um, essentially a, a starting point for you to improve your waste management practices to be more aligned with the waste management hierarchy. Next slide. So one way that um, we have tried to customize the global playbook um, is, uh, and, and I guess before that, I would mention that my colleague earlier had mentioned sort of like a two-pronged approach that we take where the first is kind of the, the platform which um, Rose gave a demo of earlier. And then the second pronged approach is our engagement in the country. So our country engagement work where we engage at the national and at the sub-national levels to build capacity for waste management and provide technical assistance um, to reduce methane emissions. And one way that we have tried to do this is by evaluating the waste management practices in Lagos, Nigeria, and essentially developing a playbook that recommends methane mitigation strategies based on the current waste um, situation, and the current landscape in Lagos. And so I think what is really unique about the Lagos playbook is that it further builds on the build the basics archetype in the global playbook, which is essentially um, an example of how we have customized the global playbooks for a particular city or for a particular country and shows how that can be done. We, we've we also worked very closely um, in country with the National Council on Climate Change, uh, International Solid Waste Association, ISWA, as well as some uh, the waste management authorities in Nigeria to provide training on organic waste management. So think about um, waste segregation, waste diversion practices, um, landfill gas capture, and several of the strategies that we have presented in this workshops are also recommended in the playbook. Next slide, please. And lastly, um, here is essentially what our work um, in the US. So again, we are working in the US with um, WM uh, and the Environmental Research and Education Foundation to develop a, a playbook that is geared towards essentially um, landfill operators and municipalities and waste districts. And so this playbook is, um, the purpose of this playbook is to serve as a, hopefully to serve as a guide for municipalities and, and operators to leverage advanced monitoring technologies, right? So think of the satellites and the drones and aircraft or fixed sensors, which are becoming a lot more popular today. And to be able to leverage these technologies to quickly find and fix leaks at the landfills. Um, but in addition to you know, being reactive, um, I think there is an opportunity to also leverage these technologies to make continuous improvements to the design of a landfill and to operations at the landfill to prevent these emissions uh, from happening in the first place. And so the US playbook provides a step-by-step -step guide to deploy this advanced monitoring systems and so from thinking about how you select a suitable monitoring system to how you actually deploy the system to pinpointing the emission source and finding the, the root cause of the emissions. Um, and I think something else that I would like to, to highlight before I turn this back on to my colleague is we do showcase some real world case studies of where the systems have been deployed um, at, in US landfills, right? Demonstrating how you know, you can begin to leverage this advanced monitoring technologies to improve um, methane de detection and inform mitigation action on the ground um, at landfills across um, the U.S. today. And with that, I'm going to turn this back to my colleague, Tom. Thank you. Thanks so much, Evan. Great overview of the approach that we're taking um, uh, in our country engagement using uh, archetypes as, as the basis for identifying different mitigation measures that are available um, regardless of what state or capacity of waste management that you have, there's mitigation measures available. Next, we'll be turning it over to Kate Siegel, Waste Sector Manager, Methane Pollution Prevention and Cleaner Task Force. 
that's going to be taking a pivot to the country engagement work um, that our partners are doing under the WasteMap platform. Okay. Thanks, Tom, for that introduction. Um, and thanks, Evan, for, for starting to talk about the, the country engagement work as well and, and what you all have been up to. Um, so um, next slide, please. Really quickly, before I get into the deep dive, I just wanted to introduce uh, the Clean Air Task Force, or CATF for short. We are also an international nonprofit that focus on climate and um, energy solutions in a number of areas. Um, my team that I work on focuses specifically on methane pollution prevention, and we've been working on super pollutants for about 20 or so years now. Historically, that's been in the oil and gas space, but with WasteMap, we're really excited um, for it's sort of our flagship uh, waste sector work. Next slide. So the country engagement, as Evan alluded to earlier, is sort of the second half of the waste map project, and it was designed to provide feedback to the platform itself. So we're able to, so through the country engagement, we're able to uh, work with national and subnational governments, raise awareness, um, provide peer exchange opportunities, but also provide technical assistance. Uh, and help them to generate new data that we can add to the platform, help them use the platform to, to think about solutions in their specific contexts. Um, next slide. So in the first year of implementation, that which is 2023, we worked in six countries across the world. Uh, Clean Air Task Force focused our work in Latin America, in Mexico, Colombia, and Ecuador specifically while RMI worked in the United States, Nigeria, and India as well. In the coming years, we'll also be expanding to new countries. Uh, I can announce that CHEF will start working in, or has plans to start working in Brazil in 2024, um, and we'll be announcing additional countries um, as we you know, move along. Next slide. So um, the first thing that we, took on as we started working in, in these new countries was to identify um, and partner with local organizations that were already doing great work in these spaces. Um, you need a network to move things forward. So I just wanted to sort of shout out our partners that, that we've um, been, been working with throughout the past year. So CIPRA is our local in-country implementation partner in Mexico. Ambire, who um, you'll hear from Vish in a little bit about the work in Colombia, is our implementation partner in both Colombia and uh, sorry, in Colombia and Ecuador. Uh, and through Ambire, we met Resi Vesi, which is an inclusive recycling organization based in Quito. Um, and then we also work with the Alianza Besora Cero, which is a local zero waste alliance that's based out of the University of Simon Bolivar in um, Quito. And they're working on the ground with a number of local composting initiatives and really doing fantastic things. Um, so next slide. So from here on out, I'll go into sort of the specifics of what we've been up to in each of these countries. So first off, uh, starting from north to south, I guess, um, our work in Mexico this past year. Next slide. So our work in Mexico has um, primarily focused on the uh, municipality of Naucalpan de Juarez. Now, Calpan is located just outside of Mexico City. They have a population of just under um, a million. And now Calpan has been working for years on trying to improve uh, their landfill operations and um, other solutions for organics diversion. Um, and when we approached them, it was actually to uh, just have a site visit and get some of our team to see a landfill in the region. Um, and we heard from them that they were still working on trying to set up an organic waste um, diversion and, and treatment facility, specifically anaerobic digestion. But it had been a number of years since they had updated the data and that private sector partners that were interested in, in bidding on the project requested that they provide new estimates to help them um, with the proposals. And so we decided to work with the municipality to conduct a waste characterization um, to get sort of that really base level data that's needed for these estimates. And then um, from using the new waste characterization data uh, from our analysis, we were able to update um, emission or estimates of methane emissions and reductions from a number of scenarios, which include 
included um, improving the passive um, gas venting systems that are currently installed um, on at the landfill cells, and then also improving gas capture and utilization um, with uh, cells that are planned for operation in coming years. Uh, based on these analyses, which we actually use some um, freely available tools from the US EPA, so the SWEET tool and the anaerobic digester project screening tool, um, we were able to estimate that in 2030, the facilities could um, reduce somewhere between 30 and 60,000 tons of, of CO2. Um, and the reductions will go long beyond 2030. Um, but it's that's really exciting for the municipality. And um, the plan is that now that we have all of this, this data, Nalcopan will be able to put out an RFP and um, solicit private sector feedback and find a partner to implement this facility on site at the landfill and also include this information in their upcoming um, update to their 10-year climate action plan. Next slide. So moving from um, Mexico onto Ecuador, next slide. So in Ecuador, our main partner has been the Ministry of Environment, Water and Ecological Transitions or MATE in Spanish. Um, so when we approached MATE, they uh, told us about these guidelines that they had been developing or planning to develop on solid waste characterization and source separation. Um, they had contracted with someone to develop a methodology uh, for these that were based on best practices around the region. Can you go to the next slide, please? And what we worked with them on was pilot piloting this method in two small municipalities in Ecuador. Um, which were Cayambe and Puerto Lopez. You can see some information on both on the right-hand side of the screen here. Um, and really seeing if that method was conducive for conducting these studies in, in Ecuador. Um, Ecuador is a really interesting country in the region. I think the there are four cities in the country that have populations of over a million. And then um, beyond that, most of the country is made up of much smaller municipalities. And so what that means in, in practice is that um, the resource constraints might be significant. And we wanted to make sure that the method that the government was telling, um, you know, all these local municipalities to implement was something that was actually um, implementable, feasible, um, something that, that they would be able to do, um, you know, without too much extra pressure on their resources and also to develop some lessons learned on that. So um, those two pilots were conducted in uh, July and August of this year. We took our lessons learned from, from those experiences to inform the development of the waste characterization. Um, and we're still working with Mate to finalize and publish those guidelines, hopefully later this spring. Um, as a next step for that project, we're also hoping to develop some online trainings that can um, help to easily disseminate those guides across the municipalities in the country so folks know just what to, to do to implement these. Um, next slide. In Ecuador, we've also been working with the municipality of Cuenca. So Cuenca has the third largest landfill in the country, and they also have a composting facility that's been operational since 2008. Currently, the facility is only accepting organic waste from its market but they would like to double that capacity. The city has partnered with COICA, the Korean aid agency, um, to uh, cover this expansion, as well as a number of other um, updates to the landfill facility that will benefit not only Cuenca, but a number of small municipalities in the region and surrounding Cuenca. Um, so where we came in is to help Cuenca estimate the emissions reductions that they'll actually be able to achieve from that composting facility. Cuenca was not able, they didn't have the capacity to estimate these values in the original proposal to, um, to the agency. And so we uh, contracted with a um, local firm in Ecuador to help collect the data and, and run these numbers. And based on our preliminary estimates, this the, the doubling of um, the capacity of the facility will result in about 10,000 tons of methane emissions reduction um, by between now and 2046. Um, and that's really, you know, exciting to have that number for a variety of reasons. Um, one, 
you know, we've really helped to strengthen the capacity of the municipality through this process. So they're able to continue to run these numbers um, as they expand or develop new facilities in the region. Um, but what we'd also like to see happen is um, improved cooperation between the you know, municipal governments and the national government. So this year, we would like to keep working with the, the municipality and, and others to make sure that these projects that they are actually implementing are reflected in Ecuador's national inventory, um, their NDCs and commitments towards the global methane pledge so that you know, Ecuador's getting credit for all the great work that they're doing. <laughs> um, next slide. So um, the final, oop, this is good. So the final thing that I'm gonna talk about, on, and this is an activity that we've been doing across the board in our countries, and um, Eben also alluded to RMI hosting workshops as well. So um, we've wanted to strengthen capacity um, through workshops and, and waste clinics. And so here, we're trying to raise awareness about the importance of waste methane with national and subnational representatives. Um, but we also wanna connect with municipalities to understand their challenges and, and help them um, understand solutions in, in this space. So in practice, what that has meant is that we've invited you know, the most relevant national ministries related to waste methane mitigation in the countries. Usually that's the Ministry of the Environment, potentially a Ministry of Housing or Urban Development, um, statistics agencies, um, and you know, amongst others, depending on the local context. Um, we're also having bringing together um, NGOs in this space and other local partners. And then we fly in somewhere around 16 municipalities um, from around the country to, to the location um, so that they're able to get the benefit of, of the presentations and of the regional experts that we're bringing in. So these are usually realized through two day um, workshops. For us, day one is a full day capacity strengthening session where everyone's hearing from um, our experts, the local government to understand the institutional framework and work that they might be doing on methane mitigation. And then we also bring in regional experts on solutions running from food waste prevention through source separation, organics diversion and treatment, and all the way through improved landfill management and dump site closure. Next slide. And on day two, um, we're hosting what is known as a waste clinic. So waste clinics aren't new. I think the CCAC has been doing them for a number of years, but we've put our own spin on it through these waste map workshops. Um, so in the mornings, we have a challenges session, which we've started referring to as uh, quote unquote waste therapy. And essentially it's an opportunity for the municipalities to talk about all of the challenges that they face focused on a number of specific topics. So we'll have tables on organics diversion, on you know collecting data from the waste sector, specifically on landfills. We've had data, uh, tables on finance. Uh, and so the cities can voice their concerns and constraints and then also hear from each other to know that they're not alone, um, at which, and it's been really successful and just really engaging. And then in the afternoons, um, we, host a solution session. And what we've started doing and found great success in is presenting cities with a hypothetical um, city that has a myriad number of challenges that, that we've decided for them and ask them to work together at their tables to think through what this city could do to improve these processes based on everything that they learned about in the previous day. And we know that you know, this doesn't really get them thinking about solutions in their specific city, but what it does do is help them think beyond the challenges that they face and, and maybe engage with the materials a little bit more um, than they would have otherwise. And, and generally, it's very interactive. It's very high energy. Um, and we're really happy with the results. I think we're hoping to publish a paper looking at um, our process, but then also some of the challenges that we've seen across the board in the countries um, where we've done this in the past year. Um, and with that, I think I can pass it back to Tom. Thank you all so much. Thanks so much, Kate. Great overview of all the work you're doing across Latin America. Uh, next, uh, we'll introduce our colleague Vishwas Vidyaranya, co-founder and managing director of Ambire Global. And he's going to take a deep dive in some of the work that they're doing to support WasteMap in Colombia. Vishwas? 
Thanks, Tom, and thanks, Kate, for the great introduction into the project. So I'm Vishwas, Managing Director of Ambar Global. We are a consulting firm based out of Columbia, but work globally in terms of in, in, in the areas of sustainable finance and circular economy. So we've been working with CATF on the implementation in Colombia and Ecuador, and I would like to give a little insight into what we did in Colombia last year. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, so, yeah, so just to give you an uh, so basically last year, first thing what we did was on a workshop, the waste clinic, which Kate was talking about. So this was a very important uh, aspect in the whole project because we brought in 16 municipalities and we had participation for the national entities and multilaterals, commercial banks, basically everybody coming together and the municipalities coming together with their problems, their challenges with respect to organic waste. So this was uh, like we had different tables where they brought in with their problems and we had experts trying to address these problems. And this helped us identify two specific projects to work on, one in Barranquilla and Cartagena. These are two coastal cities in Colombia. Uh, so we started to work, look at what are the important products that we can do in organic waste. And what came out was basically two markets, vegetable and uh, meat markets in both these cities where we could value different technologies to treat organic waste and do a pre-feasibility study, financial modeling to see if the projects are viable or not, or under what conditions these can be viable. So this was a very interesting starting point to the whole project. Next slide, please. Coming to Barranquilla, which was the first city, so basically the idea in both Barranquilla and Cartagena was to go into the cities and look at the market waste, look at the data that's available, look at the waste characteristics, the quantities, and also all the parameters that we need to consider, whether it's the macroeconomic parameters in terms of inflation or the high interest rates that are in the country right now. We're talking about more than 13 to 15% for investing in these kind of projects or the cost of waste disposal, the tariffs, the benefits, tax benefits that can, we can get. So after analyzing all of these basic information, uh, we did a first we did a technical analysis to see whether we should go with composting or anaerobic digestion. In this case, the feasibility study was chosen for anaerobic digestion. So there was an estimation done on what would be the capex, what would be the opex, uh, what would be the potential impact in terms of environment, in terms of social impact or creation of jobs, and also economic and financial impact in terms of a long term financial modeling to see if this project is really viable for any private actor or even public actor or, or even a joint PPP project uh, to structure it. So the idea was to look at all of these variables and do some kind of a sensitivity analysis and help structure this project. Next slide, please. So uh, what you see here is just some uh, brief insights into the results because the report that will come out will have uh, more detailed results. Also, just to clarify the, the symbol that you see, it's not dollar, it's Colombian peso, but which is also, also use of the same symbol. So basically what we did was two kinds of sensitivity analysis. One is if we vary the cost of waste disposal, that is through tariff, a slight increase by 5%, 10%, or 15%, or if we get a partial grant for the investment in CAPEX, what would be the results of the, of the analysis? And this was done keeping in mind a couple of things. One is looking at a net positive value, positive net, uh, net present value. And second is looking at IRR. Sometimes we have IRR between 15 to 40%, depending on the debt and equity ratios. So the idea was to do different models, thinking of an invest from an investor point of view, that if they want good returns for the money invested in this project, which will have environmental and social impacts, what should be the ideal financial model? So basically what you see here is, is, is a very incredible model in both Barranquilla and Cartagena. The results were amazing. Uh, like I said, from 15 to 40%, depending on the debt equity rate issue. And they're looking at partial subsidies of less than $100,000 for a project, which would, uh, which would cost about $500 to $600,000 of investment. So which means that, you know, the cities do not have to, do not necessarily have to invest 100% of the money uh, to uh, make these kind of projects viable. And this considering the current market conditions. Of course, getting access to preferential capital, climate finance, sustainable finance would make these models more viable. And this uh, is what we wanted to assess in the first case. Next slide, please. 
very uh, so here just uh, some uh, insights again into what kind of results you'll see in the reports. Basically, you'll see in terms of environmental impact. Of course, apart from managing the waste, you have a lot of greenhouse gas uh, mitigation in place. Uh, not just for treatment of organic waste, but also because of the long distances of transport that usually occurs in these kind of uh, uh, these kind of projects. Uh, so, so this is something which is which was very important uh, to evaluate in the project in terms of social uh, impacts as well. Uh, we had to check how much is the imp social impact in terms of public health or in terms of creation of jobs. So, this was something which was uh, very important to analyze in the project. Next, please. The, the same issue, uh, the same project was also done in Cartagena to look at the difference. So you see here Cartagena, the amount of waste is about 30 tons per day. And of course, it's, uh, there's a lot of work needs to be done in terms of collection and separation and source. But, but looking at the cost of disposal, the tariffs, because this is going to differ in every city. So the feasibility also is going to vary. So here we had a much bigger capex but also the return on investments were much better because the high cost of energy that you're gonna replace in the market. Uh, so the biogas projects are more profitable. And, and uh, of course you have the environmental and social impacts. So basically in Cartagena also, we had a different set of parameters, uh, both uh, local financial parameters and also the, taking the same macroeconomic parameters of the, the country. And we estimated what is the biogas generation? What is the electricity generation? What is the biofertilizer uh, potential, for example, through such a project? And basically did a whole financial modeling in for short, medium, and long-term, like seven, 10, and 15 years is what we did a modeling. And we did about 10 different scenarios of debt and equity, like 0% debt, 100% equity, or 100% debt, 0% equity. So basically a whole range of uh, scenarios. Next, please. Similar results, uh, Cartagena, the models were slightly better because of course your, uh, your waste quantities are also higher and the income that you get because of electricity generation or waste disposal is also higher than Barranquilla. So this was uh, very useful in Cartagena. Again, in the reports, you'll find very detailed sensitivity analysis scenarios to see how this is viable. Next, please. And, and finally, uh, similar estimations were also done in terms of avoided emissions, for example, 450, 460 tons per year of CO2 equivalent is what we can do offset with just this project. But of course, you have a longer, uh, much larger impact because you're going to uh, avoid all the trans all the transport of waste to landfills which are located at far off distance, then landfill space uh, efficiency is also going to increase. In terms of pollution, because you're going to do a decentralized waste management system, so there's an impact, positive impact of public health, you're going to create green jobs, et cetera. But one of the main outputs of this result of these two studies is basically to tell the municipalities that, look, there are different options on how you can finance this. And this is considering the conservative scenario of, of all the parameters. But if we bring in uh, capital flows, preferential capital flows, sustainable finance, this can just get better. So technology was the easy part where governance is th and the financial structuring is where we need to do a lot more work to make sure this happens. So this is just a brief insight into what we did in Colombia. And uh, over to you, Tom. Hi. Yeah, thanks so much, Fisher. Really great stuff. And, um, you know, just an example of... Um, you know, kind of some project specific analysis that's really critical for um, evaluating the different organics diversion options or mitigation options that are available with organics diversion, keeping the organic waste out of the landfills uh, being a great starting point. So we're uh, nearing the end of the hour and uh, we will have a little bit of time at the end for questions and answers. Uh, although it looks like um, our team has been doing a great job of kind of keeping up with some of the live questions coming in. So we've been able to hopefully answer uh, many of your questions, but there's a, a couple good ones that I'd like to, to, to share with the uh, participants. Um, before turning over to that, I'd like to just touch on a few housekeeping items. Um, as I mentioned, we have been recording this session and the recording will be posted on uh, the RMI event page or the waste map event page actually within 24 hours. Um, actually, uh, if you can advance two more slides. One more, yep, great. Uh, if you uh, would like to, to scan uh, this code, this will uh, take you to the event page. You could go ahead and bookmark that and all the materials will be available there. Uh, if you could go back one slide. Thank you. 
uh, want to make sure to uh, just thank all the data partners. There was a lot of data that went into this. Uh, so you see the partners here, Climate Trace, Carbon Mapper, Esthron, the Stanford Meter ML Group, the World Bank Water Waste Report, the UN Habitat Waste Wise Cities, UNFCCC, Edgar, the um, IDB, the American uh, Development Bank, Solid Waste and Circular Economy Hub, just to, to name a few. Uh, a lot of folks asked where they could get data, where they could contribute data. Absolutely, year one's been very much focused on getting the platform up and running. In the next two years, we're really gonna be turning towards uh, diving deeper on data, working uh, with, with uh, strategic partners to, to get uh, more data, ingest that data and make it available to everyone. Um, also, all the uh, all the data and code for the platform is available through GitHub. That's something that you could also also uh, connect with. So, really looking forward to working with folks and making the the um, platform more robust and available. Uh, one other question that came up was whether or not uh, you know some additional sources like agriculture um, would be included. Uh, right now, we're uh, exclusively focused on waste. We're interested, of course, in expanding to um, more deeply into waste to cover wastewater. Um, but uh, plans for right now are to, to focus on waste of landfills. And uh, there's plenty more sites that we want to make sure uh, that we are incorporating as part of that effort. So we'll also be using you know, advanced technology to identify additional sites working with our partners at Carbon Mapper and SROM. Um, have a few questions that I'd like to share. Uh, one was, uh, do we have um, economic estimates for the different mitigation strategies that are covered in this? Uh, Evan, uh, I thought maybe you could handle that one. Thanks, Tom, I'm happy to. Yeah, so right now the two doesn't have um, economic estimates, um, but I think also what is important to note here is that economic estimates are usually very unique to um, right, a specific factors and uh, situations. Um, and so I think the way that we are working in the country to provide some of those economic estimates is through some of the technical assistance that we would be providing. So for example, um, as part of the country engagement work um, in Nigeria, where we're trying to identify some projects um, and then conduct some technical economic analysis to assess the viability of those projects, right? To essentially understand um, which of these have the most promising potential, right? And then you sort of assess things around feedstock, feedstock availability, um, operating costs, the yield of, let's say, biogas. Um, so the way we're trying to get some of those estimates right now is through the um, technical assistance that we are going to be providing on the ground, but those are currently not available um, on the platform or through the tool. Yeah, really helpful. Thank you, Evan. Next question is, how do we have in country technical expertise with this tool? Uh, we consider each country might have different challenges and see opportunities like technology complexity and shortage of expertise amongst local consultants. Uh, even the methane quantification methodology for each country can be a challenge. Uh, that, that's a great question. Uh, you know, this is a great resource, but you know, how, how can folks be you know, best positioned to use this tool or to, to take, you know, or to try to deploy some of the things mentioned in the playbooks. Um, I think that's actually a, a great question uh, for a number of the speakers. I'm going to hand it off to Kate first, um, but then Evan or Vishwas, if you want to add to that, please please feel free to add in. Yeah, so I think obviously today we talked a little bit about the, the countries that we've been working in and the technical um, expertise that we've been able to provide there. Um, it is so country specific though. Some of the things that, that I know we have planned, um, so Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, be, I believe we plan to make available the training PowerPoints that we've used in all of our workshops um, on the platform at a later date. So um, folks will have access to that information. Um, and some of these will, for example, right, everything in Latin America will be in Spanish and they'll be very tailored to the region. So um, bearing in mind that everything won't work for everyone. Um, but there will be opportunities to strengthen capacity through through that measure. Um, but then I think I would also say, like, um, you know, we we worked in six countries last year. We have plans to expand to a few more. And so there are always opportunities um, for technical assistance from these teams. 
But there are also a number of other um, initiatives that offer technical assistance in the sector. So um, both RMI and CHEF partner with the, the um, CCAC, Climate and Clean Air Coalition, and they've been offering technical assistance around the world for a number of years. Uh, the low methane initiative that Carolina announced um, earlier in the slideshow uh, that was launched last year at, at COP, as well as a number of other partner organizations around the world. Um, Evan, do you want to add anything? Thanks, Kate. I think um, maybe the only thing I would add to that is that the two, right, um, sort of that uh, demo that Rose had provided earlier helps to, you, if you want to think about it, kind of narrow down a list of potential projects that you could focus on, right? So it helps you to prioritize sort of like where are some of the, where should you focus your attention on, right? And then I think follow on to that is where you sort of seek technical assistance from some of the in-country partners, depending on the country that you um, that you are, whether that's Canada Task Force or RMI or other um, partners that might be working in country. Thank you both. That's really helpful. Um, yeah, I mean, we, this is, uh, you know, a project that we will be um, uh, spearheading these next two years with our partners. Um, so there'll be a lot more trainings and materials that we'll make available. We're trying to make, you know, be both transparent in our data and also make as many tools and resources available, um, but also happy, um, you know, to work with folks directly. Uh, we can't provide training one-on-one -on -one to everyone, but we, you uh, uh, focus on responding to any questions that we receive through our email and always happy uh, to work with folks directly, uh, especially if they have data that they'd like to share um, either, you know, to ingest into the platform or if they want to do analysis, we're happy to support that analysis. We work, um, as Kate mentioned, pretty closely, not only, not only with all the, um, you know, constellation of partners through the Global Methane Hub, but through the Climate and Cleaner Coalition Global Methane Initiative. There's a number of uh, partner countries that are working on the Global Methane Pledge. There's a number of NGOs that are working to support those partner countries. So we're trying to do as much, uh, not only you know make the tool user friendly, but also support those organizations that are interested uh, in using WasteMap to um, you know to to do analysis and deploy these mitigation measures in their countries. I know we're at the hour. Um, we've got a lot of great questions. We've tried to answer as many as possible in the chat and in the follow-up here. Um, we'll also, there's a couple we didn't get to, happy to follow up with folks directly, or please just contact us um, through the, uh, the waste map at rmi.org uh, uh, email. And please, uh, lastly, uh, be sure to scan the QR code to keep up to date with this recording and other materials that we'll be presenting. Thanks everyone for joining. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so much to the speakers for um, really interesting content uh, and timely presentations. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day.